Well, obviously, the first thing is trying to stay out of it in general. But if you have to be out in the heat, then there are a few things that you can do to try to at least protect yourself a little bit. And uh, it starts off with number one, obviously, trying to protect yourself from the sun. So any type of sunscreen, anything that you can provide yourself with shade, um, whether it's a brimmed hat or even something like an umbrella, um, can help with that or just finding shade naturally itself. Uh, of course, some clothing. Uh, you want to wear anything that's light, light colored, um, uh, not too many layers. Try to uh, promote, you know, uh, you know, try to keep the breeze going through and uh, not getting too, too hot there. Um, of course, staying hydrated. So you want to drink fluids frequently, even if you don't feel that you're thirsty. Um, you probably really want to be drinking a, probably a good half a liter every hour just to kind of keep up with any potential sweat loss that you might have. Usually water is the best thing for you, unless you're out on the football field and running around doing a lot of high activity stuff and some of the electrolyte drinks like Powerades and Gatorades are good, but in the, in the general sense, water is the best thing you can do. As far as SPF um, 30 is usually the best way to go. Uh, you really don't need to have anything more than that. And you want to apply it at least 30 minutes before you go out in the sun and then reapply every two to three hours, depending on what you're doing. Uh, there's kind of a whole spectrum as far as kind of heat illness. It goes anywhere from heat cramps to heat exhaustion all the way up to heat stroke, which is actually a medical emergency at that point. So obviously this kind of stems from dehydration and overheating. So the first things that you need to watch for would be cramping, and that's going to be arms, legs, and abdomen, your bigger muscle groups. And uh, the, from there you can get anything from uh, dizziness, mild confusion, nausea, vomiting, um, weakness, fatigue, all these things are kind of initial signs that your body is starting to kind of get overheated and get overwhelmed. So if you're starting to notice those things, then that's when you really need to make sure you get into a cool place, preferably with something with air conditioning, if not, then at least a shaded area, and try to cool yourself down. And uh, there's a lot of ways you can do that. The, it seems like the most, the easiest way and most effective is just something as easy as carrying a spray bottle with a fan and try to promote heat loss that way, or even like an ice pack at the back of the neck under the armpits or in the groin area if you're getting to that point. Both populations have difficulty with temperature regulation. Um, a lot of the, the infants, toddlers, the younger folks, um, their body just isn't used to it. They also have um, more surface area for, uh, for, I guess, you know, accumulating the heat, but then not enough vasculature to promote the heat loss. So it's kind of a, a lose, lose on both situations. The elderly, um, they're just uh, usually more affected by chronic illnesses and things like that. So anytime you have heart disease or blood pressure issues or any of these chronic problems, it just adds to that. In addition, medications, a lot of these medications can cause problems with thermal regulation. So it's good to just talk to your pharmacist or your medical provider and make sure if you are any of those medicines that they can kind of point you in the right direction as far as what to do. The only other major warnings is just, um, especially with infants and toddlers, you just don't, you not want to leave anybody in a, in a vehicle at this point. Um, if you're in an enclosed vehicle, the temperature can get elevated extremely quickly, even going to the store for a minute or two is very dangerous, especially for someone who can't roll down the window or unlock the door or drink for themselves. So that's very important to not do that. Um, and it's just good to keep an eye out on your elderly folks, your neighbors and stuff. You know, if, if, if you know that it's this warm and you see them out and, you know, offer them to come in, you know, for a little break from the sun and get some air conditioning. But um, the last resort is any kind of public place, a library, a mall, anything that has just kind of air conditioning so you can get in and cool off.